senior from Orlando, Florida, FAU. One of the favorites in Conference USA this year. They won the regular season championship last year. And a leadoff walk for Florida State. The head coach for the Seminoles, Lonnie Alameda, up, in her 11th season, approaching 500 career wins. They have dominated the ACC, winners of six consecutive titles and the heavy favorites to win it again this year. Florida State just playing so relaxed. That's what I love about it. No pressure, enjoying the game. Lots of smiles in the dugout. Yep. And when you play like that, you play free. Good things happen. They don't seem to be too concerned, at least at this point, that they're the defending champs. They really don't consider themselves that. We'll see if that holds as the season progresses. And a nice throw down from Caitlin Burke. As they catch Callie Herod trying to steal, one down. Well, Burke doing a really good job of throwing out Herod. This is a changeup, so she gets a little bit of an extra start on the fact this is a slower pitch. The throw slightly up the line, but I love the, the fact that the tag is applied and Herod going in hard. Burke. <laughs> She's loving it. Sammy Legier making the play at short, two out. Well, it's interesting. Two up, two down. Now, granted, via the the steal and the being thrown out, but FSU has scored in the first inning of every game. It was a really big deal to throw Herod out at second mm -hmm. base because they've had that attack mentality offensively. So, especially right in the middle of their lineup with the runner in scoring position, and nobody out. Now, you throw out at second, get the second quick out. Nobody's on for the middle of the lineup coming up. Yeah, they come in here nine and zero. Oh. 23 of their 67 runs scored early. They scored five in the first inning last night yeah. in their win over Minnesota. Yeah, what'd you say? Almost 50% of the runs have been scored in that yeah. first inning. That's uh, that's impressive. Well, and that's an intimidating, too. Takes your opponent right out of the game. Yeah, they've scored 36 runs in their four games here. So they are putting up some serious numbers. They'll go with uh, the youngster, Katherine Sandercock, in the circle today and save Megan King, perhaps, for their matchup tonight with Tennessee. We'll wait and see. I know that's probably the pitcher that most fans out there would love to see in prime time tonight. Well, I think that's who we would love to see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The thing about the way that you've seen Florida State swing this weekend is that they're all in. They're fully committed to a pitch. Even if they swing at a ball, which hasn't been very often that they've chased, they're all in. That's why they're creating that power so well, because they're swinging hard. Second walk, and a two-out base runner. Yeah, they just have a great eye. You know, their pitch selection has been spot on. Just like that last pitch that Cheryl took for ball four. I mean, that's a great pitch as a pitcher. I want to hit her to swing at that because if she hits it, she's going to hit a weak ground ball to the right side. She's left-handed, but good take by Cheryl to draw the walk. Elizabeth Mason in the four spot. Hey, I mean, you look at this roster up and down. You know, there can be a lot of distractions after you win a national championship in the offseason. They look like they're in great shape. They're well-conditioned. They've obviously been spending a lot of time in the cages. Their swings look good. And their mentality looks very sharp. Well, I love the way that Lonnie took a lot of pressure off them. You know, she drew the stick figure of the artist that she is on the top of the <laughs> sand in the mountain. And that's what she said. Last year we were there. This year we're starting at the bottom. FAU keeps them off the board here in the first. The Owls coming up when we come back. Oh, beautiful day to be out on the water. A little windsurfing, a little boating going on. What's that, Smitty? Is that old Tampa Bay or where? 
That might be the intercoastal be uh, down by the sunshine. Sky. Oh, Plain, yes, possibly. I think you're right right there. Can you That's do where, that, Michelle? That's where the winds blow. I can ride a boat. I don't know about the windsurfing wind part. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can sit boat. in a boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do a little um, water skiing. Yeah. A little wakeboarding. It's, it's been a great weekend down here, and uh, we hope you'll join us next year for the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. Eleven ranked teams were here. It's a field of 16 teams and playing softball for four days straight. It's been a blast. The starting lineup for the Owls brought to you by St. Pete Clearwater. Sammy Legier, their top hitter at 333 on the season. This is their fifth game here at the tournament. All five ranked opponents. And before coming down here to, or up here, I guess, for them to clear water, they played <laughs> UGA last week. So they have played a lot of ranked opponents. And they've held their own. Yeah, yeah, they really yeah. have. They were right there with Oklahoma, Texas, Oregon, JMU. There's a look at Joan Joyce. 25 years, over 900 wins. And uh, one of the all-time great pitchers in the history of the game back in her day. Legend in the game, absolutely. And she's a character to talk to as well when you <laughs> ask her about her kids and her student athletes. Well, you always know that FAU is going to have tough pitching, and yeah. they've proven that in that tough schedule that they've gone up against and holding their own just need to be able to put their offense together to score a few more runs. But pitchers have gotten tested. I like they've thrown well. Here's the 2-2 pitch from Katherine Sandercock, the freshman from McLean, Virginia. Picks up her first strikeout, one down. What can we expect from Sandercock, guys? Well, Sandercock, just the freshman. She's been outstanding so far in this tournament. She throws with good velocity in the mid-60s. It's that drop ball. She just picked up a strikeout on it. It's heavy. It rotates over the top. But she also has a good changeup and a really good rise ball. She'll change eye level. So that's the rise ball. She'll maybe take you up in the zone early and then hammer down low. Was on the junior national team for two cycles. Which says a lot, because normally kids age out. Good little pitcher. For the uninitiated, what, what, you, there's a drop, and then a lot of times people talk about she's got a heavy drop. Spinner pitchers will have more spin than velocity. She's got a lot of velocity uh, with that spin, and so it just sinks real hard. It is what it sounds like. All right, two down. When you catch a pitcher with a heavy drop, it, it just it crushes your hand. You just it, imagine that ball feeling like you're, you're catching a bowling ball instead of a softball. Spinny pitchers, that ball's going to come in and have really good movement, but it just doesn't have the, the power behind the weight, it. Power, yeah, yeah, I think power is a good word for it. It's definitely not going to float in there. She's looked good, I feel like, in the times that we've seen her, and such good experience to get to pitch behind Megan King, and who's going to be the the number one pitcher for FSU, and learn from her. She's 4-0 and on the season with a 1.62 ERA. Has a couple of putouts here in the first. We are scoreless. The defending champs when we come back. Oh, even those guys can enjoy a day like today down at the beach. Beautiful day here in the St. Pete Clearwater area. Some of the top performances from our lead invitation of Florida State, the only unbeaten left. How about the Cal Bears and JMU, both with a pair of ranked wins. And for Kentucky, some nail biters, all three of their wins. Oh, not, not nail biters, I should say, <laughs> by run rule. I thought that said one run. <laughs> really impressed yeah. JMU here. Megan Good coming out strong, and they've been scoring some runs, too, making a little noise here. Five, six, and seven coming up for the Seminoles. This is Anna Shellnut. She's got two hits in the tournament, and she's been able to trot around the bases and touch them all on both of those hits. Three oh four on the season. Junior out of Franklin, Georgia. Really announced her presence in the postseason last year. Was spectacular. Really, the entire Florida State offense picked it up. Yeah. 
once it was uh, win or go home. Really responded well to the pressure. Here's what Anna's done so far here. Pitch on the inside corner that she blasts out of the yard. And again, inside. There's one pitch this Knoll team can hit. It's slowing in. And a rope up the middle. On cue. Yeah, well, right down the middle. I mean, it seemed like we were in that swing with Anna. I think I saw that pitch out of the hand and got excited because it was about belt tied, complete mistake. And Shellnut's going to take advantage of it. Look at how right down the middle that pitch is, trying to make its way inside. Barrels it up for her first hit that's not a home run in this tournament. So Shellnut on board, Danny Morgan. Just missed her inside. Junior out of Noonan, Georgia. She's got a couple of home runs in this tournament as well. They hit five of them against Oklahoma a couple days ago. They'll get the lead runner at second for the first out. Jolie Duffner making the play at third. The next batter, number six, Zoe Casas. This is Zoe Casas, the Californian. That's some great crowds to play in front of, too, here. Every game on this field has just been a packed house, being able to check out usually a ranked versus ranked opponent matchup. It's been awesome. And I know, Michelle, you've had uh, a big hand in putting all this together. We're excited to announce we are going to be releasing the teams that will be here next year, right, as the season progresses throughout the year. So that uh, if you're with us throughout our coverage of college softball on the road to the Women's College World Series, perhaps your favorite team will be here next year. You can get your tickets early and book your hotels and your restaurants and all that good stuff for the local economy. I've got a question for you, Michelle. How is this compared to the expectations that you guys had whenever you were organizing this tournament coming in? Well, I think a lot of stuff exceeded expectations. A lot of it was kind of a search and feel it out. Um, but I think as far as the support, we were sold out on Saturday. The, the, uh, I think it's been outstanding. So I, I think that pleasantly surprised, a lot of really good yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, it comes down to the 16 teams, 11 of them ranked in the top 25. Next year is going to be just as good. Uh, you know, so if you love the lineup this year, wait till you see next year's lineup. I was really surprised to see the quality of announcers that you guys got this year in the NFL <laughs> season. That's what it's going to look like next year, <laughs> February 13th to 16th. By the way, it, you know, mid-70s and sunny may not be that way where you are in February. So come on down. We'll have more coverage for you, of course. And that website is where you can keep an eye on ticket information. Opposite. Good coverage by Faith Davis. And they're going to get a double play. How about this owl defense? Uh, this defense for the Owls getting it done. This ball roped at Davis, makes the catch in for the infield and the double play. And loving the support. Well, we all got a chance to be a part of uh, the welcome banquet. That was a couple of nights ago. The teams had a good time playing games, uh, doing a little dancing, doing a little podcasting, fun for all. And of course, it always ends with some outstanding fireworks. 16 teams here, 11 of them ranked at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. That fireworks show was incredible. It was good. It kept going and going. It was nice. It was nice. Fireworks make you feel happy. They do. They really do. It's like I was at Disney World. We're celebrating. <laughs> Four, five, and six. For Florida Atlantic, this is Mia Olson, the pitcher. Nine wins last year in the circle. She hit close to 300 with a little power. I really like that Sandercott can throw that drop ball for a strike. 
She can start a little bit higher. She can move it lower. Still, it, it doesn't matter where she starts it. It still has the same heavy drop ball movement to it. I'm really impressed with her. Now gets the strikeout. That's her second. drop ball that I was talking about moved a little bit away from the hitter as well but it's a nice looking pitch yeah, I love her location on it you know, just the way that she has the ability to uh, share a little information passing the bat info and the bat that's right saying uh, drop in drop out but I love the way that she locates it on on each corner Grounded to short, two down. Lauren Witt will step in, number six in the order. Three year starter for the Owls. Twenty-two on the season for Lauren. Here's the one-one. And grounded again to Heritage Short, three up and three down. Two innings complete, and we are scoreless. Oh, look at that. That's the way to do it. <laughs> Get right in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Back to live action, a scoop and short over uh -huh. the first. In time, Legier with a heck of a play. <laughs> that was awesome. Got some wheels, and she needed to use them to go get that ball. That's what I love about shortstops when they're aggressive and they go get the ball. Look at the way she is sprinting in. Love the glove work, the way the spatial orientation between her glove and her body. See the way that she's going to go get that, set it, and then throw on the run. Bang, bang, play. The jeer's busy. Woo! Two down. From the time that she made that tag from Caitlin Burke's throw to second base to throw at Callie Harrod, she's been fired up. She's been ready. She's been fun to watch. FAU needs that energy. Spread out to the rest of her defenders. This is an FAU team. When I talked to Joan Joyce ahead of time, she said, we're going to hit well this year. That's really what I thought our team was going to do. We're going to hit well. <laughs> I'm worried about our defense and our pitching. It's been the complete opposite. Their defense and pitching has really been stellar. They've been in every single game. Their offense is what's been sputtering. Well, the longer they can hang around, you start getting a little confidence, and Florida State starts thinking about it a little bit. Warning her about the new two-second pause that you have to take the signal on the pitching rubber this year and that you have to pause for two seconds. Trying to keep pitchers from quick pitching hitters. Carson Gordon in the batter's box. This is going to prepare FAU so well, though, you guys, for what's ahead of them for their conference play. I mean, they're getting battle tested in February, and usually it's a little bit later on in the year, but this is gonna be so good for this team to head towards March and April and go against all this good pitching that they've seen yeah. here. Well, that's what Joan and I were talking about, where I was like, well, she's like, oh, I don't know what's happening with our hitters. And it's like, when you leave this tournament, you go home, everything will look like a beach ball. Yes. I promise, <laughs> after, after the arms that you have faced in this tournament, 
if you can keep your hitters confidence up yeah. that's yeah. where the balance is, is the balance. trying to tell them that there's light at the end of the tunnel but you got to keep them confident up at the plate because as you know i mean that's the biggest battle as a being a hitter is just having the confidence to go in there and knowing that you can do it yeah. here's the two two to gordon and a base hit First hit for Florida State, Alpha Mia Olson. And for Florida Atlantic, uh, picked to finish second in Conference USA, looking for a 10th straight trip to the NCAA tournament. Uh, but they've had a lot of turnover. Of course, the other challenge is, you know, with geography being a part of the NCAA tournament placement, uh, you, you often end up going to Tallahassee or to Georgia or to Gainesville. And that there's going to be extra bases as Palmer tried to dive for it instead of keeping it in front of her. And Florida State will score. Florida State has hit the ball so hard already in this game. More of line drives, seeing a lot of ground balls, and then when they really get a hold of it and are ready to get that drop ball that's trying to get down, able to flatten it out with a line drive but poor decision there by Madison Palmer the center fielder she needs to be able to keep that in front run would not have scored if she were to keep that in front ball was smoked by Cheryl well she had no choice she, because of the angle she took she had to dive for it because it was past her that was the only way she was going to knock it down best case scenario on that is you want to drop step you want to angle back into the gap and cut it off before it goes to the fence that probably would have limited it to uh, keeping the runner at third but you know, early in the season, those are all the balls that you're learning to read. I think, too, you just want to be the one that steps up to make the great play against yeah. the great team. Sometimes you press, right, when you're mm -hmm. playing against a second-ranked team in the country. Well, and you know your offense is struggling to put runs up on the yeah. board, so you do anything you can to try and keep that that bagel up on the board uh, you know, for your opponents. Sometimes it's tough decisions. Two to the Mason, high hopper deep in the hole. And Mason beat it out. Runners on the corners here as the two-out rally continues. Well, Mason aided by the high hopper here. And even though she's from the right side, she does a good job of getting down the line. Rosa coming back hard up the middle, throws across her body. And it's a really tight but good call at first base. Lizzie Mason getting down the line. It's one thing not only have we seen Florida State go up and, and swing big and attack up at the plate, but they've also just been playing hard, base running so hard, taking two bases when they can, getting down the line to leg out some infield singles. I, I, they've just, they're attacking every part of the game already in February. It's good to see for Ani Alameda and her team. Got more of the Seminoles coming up. A top 10 showdown in primetime on ESPN2. 7 Eastern, Florida State and Tennessee with Aubrey Leach, the All-American leading the way. Choices for Ralph and Karen Weekly to make. Who do we get to start? They got both Matty Moss and Kaylin Arnold coming back. They've got a good young pitcher joining them. And a new shipman on the team. And a new shipman, yeah. Ashley Rogers is that that other arm for them. And Allie Shipman is the starting catcher. Maddie's younger sister, the former All-American shortstop. Ooh, it's a rematch of the 2015 Supers, won by Tennessee. Of course, Florida State, your reigning champs. It's the last time the Tennessee made to the World Series mm -hmm. was going up against Florida State, winning that Super Regional and making it there in 2015. So it was Florida State that had that, you know, the team with the most trips to the World Series without winning it. They won it last year, so now it's Tennessee, actually, the most trips. 
seven of them without winning. Bases are loaded here for Florida State. And Danny Morgan. That's the fourth walk for Mia Olson. One run in, and now the base is loaded, and all of it coming with two outs. Morgan swinging away at the first pitch. They'll go to the short way. And they had the force out anyways. So there's the third out of the inning. <laughs> One run in for Florida State in the lead. Lovely day at the beach on the Gulf Coast of Florida. The St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. And here at Eddie C. Moore Field in Clearwater. One nothing, Florida State with the lead over Florida Atlantic as we go to the bottom of the third. Fouled off by Caitlin Burke. Six up and six down so far for Katherine Sandercock. Burke 250 on the season. Junior out of Gainesville. And Mason able to get there to make the catch. So impressive in all aspects of the game. Going, what a great read. She knew right away she wanted to catch this ball in the air and that she was going to have a chance to lay out for it in the right center field gap. Unbelievable play by Lizzie Mason. She's been so much fun to watch since her freshman year. And I would be pumped up, too, if I were Catherine Sandercock about that catch. So pretty. She knows this park. She grew up playing here. And <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous coverage. What a great event for her. We've had so many awesome defensive wow. plays this weekend. It's been so much fun to watch. Faith Davis drops the bunt. Cheryl, and she legs it out. That's the first hit for FAU. And Morgan Noah a little bit late getting to the bag. And we talk a lot of times, you button off the corners or you button off the second baseman. And Noah was just late getting to the back. Take a look at where she is. She's way up the middle, and this ball goes down. It's a hard bun. It should be an easy out, but she's floating. Look at the way she's floating to first base. As a second baseman, you have to sprint and get there and know that your teammate's throwing to the bag, and that's where you need to be. That's a tying run now aboard for the Owls. Nani Alameda trying to fire up her infield a little bit. Perhaps she noticed that that might have been a little lackadaisical. Yeah. Sydney Cheryl, too, led her like a quarterback, too. Perfect throw mm -hmm. if she just would have gotten there a little bit faster. I remember it was Sydney Cheryl who was at second base last year, so yeah. new position for Noah. Number nine hitter Carly Rosa. Noticing, too, that there's only three returners in the same spot as the last national championship game. It's Carson Gordon over at first base, Callie Harrod shortstop, and Anna Shelnut back behind the plate. Everybody else was in a different position, like Sydney Sherrill, who played second base. And for Noah, you know, she's a true freshman, so learning the speed of the game at this level, even when you play elite travel ball, at that J.O. level, it's still different. The speed at this D1 level, everything is just faster. You learn it, you're like, okay, I need to put my afterburners on. <laughs> she's going to always remember that place. Yes. Back in March, April, May, she's going to remember that and learn from it. Well, they can remedy it if they get a double play ball here.
misses high, two and two. Lion share of Sandra Cox pitches are low in the zone with that heavy drop ball we talked about, inducing quite a few ground balls. With that ability to change the eye level, put it up at the eyes, and now come back low. And she does there, fouled off by Rosa. Two, two. Slow roll to Cheryl. Her only play is to first for the second out. And the tying run in scoring position for FAU. Top of the order's coming up. Palmer struck out on a drop ball her first time up. Just the one hit off of Sandercock, the infield the bump earlier in the inning by Faith Davis, who's down at second. <laughs> FAU you can score here. That would be a, a big get for them just to be able to answer. Florida State putting a run up on the board and the the top of the inning. He's going to try to answer back. And damage is done. Herod, they've got the runner hung up. And nobody's there to cover the bag. It's second, and she's back in safe. That's another miscommunication. The youngster. Morgan Noah, she follows her throw instead of circling back. And that's where, as an infielder, you have to know what your protocol is. Are you following your throws or are you returning back? So Herod, she chooses to go behind the runner. And you can see part of it too is Herod. Herod should be circling back. So Noah is following her throw. Herod circled back. That's the, probably the biggest miscommunication and rundowns. And you have to know what protocol is. Score to fielder's choice, two on now. So the go ahead aboard for FAU. That's what speed does for you too. Madison Palmer, a lefty slapper, puts the ball on the left side of the field and she makes Callie Herod make a decision. Do I want to try to throw to first? No, I can't because she has so much speed. So I'm going to look at the runner at second and try to get in out there. It's a well-placed ball by Palmer just to even cause some confusion in the Florida State infield. So this time the coach doesn't go out to join them, but the infield gets together for their own confab. Trying to clear this up. The number two hitter is Ashley Jennings, who grounded right back to the pitcher in her first A-B. And you think about Michelle, you want to make that rundown in one throw. Absolutely. It was thrown too early back to second base when she had an opportunity to be able to run her back a little bit deeper to second or closer to second base and then throw it. You don't want so many throws because it causes that confusion. Infield talking to each other, shell not looking. Everyone has to know where they're going. Corners come in. Short is covering third. And with the two outs, you got to know where you're going. Yeah, when you really watch the Florida State infield, they're constantly talking to each other. And maybe Morgan Noah, not so much. She's probably more so listening to a couple of seniors that she's surrounded by and Sydney Sherrill over at third base. But Carson Gordon's constantly communicating. Callie Hare, the shortstop, constantly communicating, looking at each other. Hmm. That 
hits in for a strike, two and one. Well, and Jennings, a lot of speed as well. Slap, she's got that split grip. When she gets in the box, you really see the way her hands are apart. So what that tells me, especially the drop ball pitcher, she's looking to bash something down, use their speed again, try to keep this defense uh, off balance, try to create some havoc. Off the end of the bat, two and two. You've seen some high hoppers on this field, too, because it's pretty hard. So you've seen some balls scoot through the infield or hop over the infielder's heads. Something else to keep in mind whenever you have a slapper up to bat, especially as an infielder, you know the field by now because you're four days into the tournament. Yep. Speaking of which, the field has been in great condition for yep. the number of games yep. and the pitching mound as well. You know, the circle looks really good. I mean, all those things make a difference. you got to know the field you're playing on. That'll get through a base hit. Runner will be held at third, and they are loaded for FAU with two down. Base hit for Jennings. It's the second hit of the inning. Defense pulled in. Jennings just popping it right back up the middle. Herod more toward the 5-6 hole and pulled up. That ball just sneaks through the infield. I like the fact that FAU is going to hold up their runners. Davis, I think, would have been thrown out if she tried to go. Grounded to Noah, who will make the play to first, and the Owls leave them loaded. Opportunity missed for FAU. 1-0 Florida State with three complete. We'll talk with Joan Joyce when we come back. Welcome back to the 2019 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. A 1-0 lead for Florida State. Now joined by the Owls head coach, Joan Joyce. Hey, Coach Joyce, it's Michelle. A uh, couple of questions for you on your hitting. Um, earlier before the game, we talked about the fact you'd like to see your offense put some more runs up on the board. What specifically are you telling them that, that you want to see in this game? Right now, as long as you don't tell that other team, but we're going to move up <laughs> in the box, okay, because we need to get that drop ball before it's going down. And Coach, this is Amanda. How do you feel like you're going to work your pitching staff? Mia Olson is in there right now. What's your, how long do you think she's going to go, and how are you going to work your staff for the rest of this game? Um, she's going to go as long as she doesn't get into too, too much trouble. But I have somebody else warming up, and if we get into a little trouble, uh, we'll go with another pitcher. All right. Thank you, Joan. You're welcome. Thanks, Coach. Bye. <laughs> Well, I love it. She's always thinking about adjustments, what she wants her team to do. You know, heavy drop ball coming in. The best place to hit that is going to be if you move to the front of the, the pitching rubber. And Olsen's been doing a great job, Amanda. Yeah, I think so, too. Got out of some jams. Like been up one run. Casas, a hot shot ricochets off of Rosa. Let's see if that was a bit of a wake-up call for Florida State. Casas out and around this ball is on the outside corner, but she still hit it really hard. Tough hop for Rosa over at second base, and sometimes that, that's going to happen. But because she did hit it so hard, it's even tougher to play that ball as a second baseman. Again, Florida State just swinging so big, so much confidence behind their swing and in their preparation. Cassidy Davis. <laughs> Joan Joyce mentioned she had somebody warming up in the bullpen. And if she does, Kelsey Morrison, just in case. 1 1 to Cassidy Davis, 2 and 1. Davis lined out to right field. Ended up being a double play. Throwing back to first base to double off Zoe Casas. Pops it up to the right side again. And on the run is Faith Davis. One down. 
looking back too to this weekend, you haven't seen Florida State strike out very much. They've not swung and missed very much. It's just when they swing, they're so confident in what they're seeing that they've been making a lot of contact. Have you seen that? And no. I haven't seen every single swing of every game, believe it or not. But you have it. You've seen no. them make a lot of hard contact when they swing. And they've walked a lot. So they've, they've really, their pitch selection has been outstanding. What I haven't seen them do a lot is that, non-productive outs. You know, that's a situation, leadoff runners on first base. You want to try to put the ball down on the ground right side, move your teammate up. It's such a long weekend, too. Huh? They're going to play six games when it's all said and done. Got a 2-0 count right now to Morgan Noah. base runners in the first again in the second they got a run in with two outs in the third Noah chased two down it's not the same offense that we've seen the last few days and a credit to Mia Olson for keeping those bats quiet chasing a rise ball out of the zone Olsen's been working a lot of off, a lot of down, but that rise ball's got some great zip to it, really good rotation and spin, just gets up in the eyes. Base hit for Herod. So a couple on board with two outs. And uh, you know, Florida State's hit so many home runs that we haven't really talked about this a lot, but the lower part of the lineup, so Cass gets the base hit. If you're Davis and you're Noah, You've got to focus on trying to move your teammate up 60 feet because right there, that would have been a base hit and a run for Herod if she would have been in second, at second at scoring position. With two outs, you're taken off on the pitch. So it's all those little things when you're at the lower part of the lineup knowing what your job is. Carson Gordon, a ground out on the first, singled and scored in the third. Taken all the way, three and one. Bases loaded for the second inning in a row. Sixth walk by Olsen. Yeah, I think I would have wanted to give Gordon something a little closer than that. And face Sidney Sherrill with the bases loaded. The more feared hitters in this lineup. Sydney with the RBI double to score their only run in the last inning. <laughs> Cheryl upset herself that she missed it that. <laughs> Tell by their body language yep. immediately. As a pitcher, you're like, <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. Selling that off. She finally threw one close. She's like, oh. Miss two and one. Losing her touch a little bit. Losing her release point, her rhythm. Falling behind a lot of these hitters. Yeah. 
Out to center field, plenty of room for Palmer. Second inning in a row. The Knowles leave too many on base. Lonnie Almeida when we come back. Welcome back to the 2019 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. A one nothing lead for Florida State. And Lonnie Almeida now joining us. Hey, Coach. Oh, hello. <laughs> what is something that you'd like Sander Cock to adjust and work on for the rest of this game? Uh, I think she's doing all right. Um, we're missing on her eyes ball a little bit, but um, no, we're just not taking care of the ball. We're just a little mentally, emotionally uh, empty, I guess, right now, you know, <laughs> trying to figure out how to get after six games in a weekend. And uh, But I think she's doing all right. And Coach, this is Michelle. Your offense have left a couple of uh, runners on base the last couple innings. What would you like to see them do differently to get those lobs into RBIs? Well, I mean, we got doubled off on one. That was a bad read, you know, in that sense. But, you know, we're always aggressive on the basis, so it's kind of one of the mindsets that we have. So, um, you know, I just I think right now we just need to shore up. You always talk about Sunday strong and really being mentally strong. You're going to be a little exhausted. And this is a really good challenge for us as a young team. Um, you know, it's been some emotional games this weekend. And the emotions drain you sometimes. And you got to learn how to manage that. And so that's just what we've been talking about. Thank you very much, Lonnie. We appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you. Coach. Well, Sunday Strong will not end with this game. They're going to have to be even stronger next when they will face a top 10 challenge from Tennessee. That game at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. The pitcher, Mia Olsen, to start things off. They left the bases loaded last inning and couldn't get a run in, and they're going to have a base runner again right here. Herod made a heck of an effort to get to it. A hit off of Sander Cox's glove. Almost she was able to, to snag that ball. It would have been an easy 1-3 put out, but Herod goes so hard after this ball. She almost ended up in the Florida State dugout because she was running so hard to get to that ball trying to make a play. Got a pinch runner coming in here, Kelsey Morrison. Such a different fatigue, I think, at the beginning of the season than it is at the end of the season. At the end of the season, you're a little bit banged up and just tired from how long the season has been. But early on, it's a bit of a shock to go from practice to then playing five and six mm -hmm. games and you're traveling a little bit, you're on a different eating schedule, you're on a different sleeping schedule. So it's a bit of an adjustment for all the teams that start up to, as Coach Alameda was talking about, mentally and, and kind of physically fatigued. It's, it's completely normal right now. And especially the emotional fatigue that a team like Florida State is going through with all the expectations yeah. and coming off of a national championship. Trying to move the base runner over. Duffner grounded out her first time up. Who you really feel sorry for are the teams from up north who have to travel south every single weekend for the first five or six weeks of the, yeah. of, the of the year. You're making a trip to Florida. You're making a, a couple of trips to California, California or Arizona. Wow. May, may not have a home game until March. Yeah. yeah. Middle of March. <laughs> Got some more activity in the bullpen for FAU. That's Skylar Witte. That's not even including like a midweek game that a team decides to play before the tournament mm -hmm. where they go and play five and six games. You know, football has it easy. They only have one game a week, guys. <laughs> we have like six and seven games in a week. Mm -hmm. Oh, two again off of Sander Clark's glove and safe at first is Duffner. Tying run in scoring position, the go ahead on the base pass for the second inning in a row. 
as a pitcher, after you release the ball, your next job is to field the ball. And you can see that's just going off of the heel of her glove. Those are, those are definitely both ground balls that she needs to be able to catch. Talked about Sandra Kock being a freshman. She is very experienced in the circle, but working a little bit more on your defense is going to help out your own game. Seminole fans trying to help out uh, their defense right here. And Lonnie alluded to it a little bit, or her team may, may have lost its focus here a little. Yeah. The energy doesn't seem to be the same. That's Leslie Ferris, the new second baseman. Two count to Lauren Witt. Well, they had a long game last night. You know, went extra, uh, not extra, as it went extra long than it probably should have. They had the opportunity to have a run, yep. eight run rule shortened game and weren't able to close it out. So it kept them on the field for an extra hour. You know, and that's extra pitches, it's extra up and down for defenders. That's why it's so important. If you get an opportunity to close out a game early, you have to do it. Was it long? It was an hour extra, yes. Yes, yes it was. <laughs> I, think I was laying in bed watching. We, you we guys. lived it too. Yeah. 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 Well, and then they scored five in the in the last inning to yeah. extend it even more. Where's the one two? And they figured, you know, we're still here, so we might as well score five. Get a few, get, get see get a few we, more at bats. Get some stats. It's yeah. Good, it's, good. <laughs> yeah. it's good for the batting average. Yeah. Bad, bad for the, the the bed. Past the bedtime, but you know. Right. <laughs> I had to go to sleep right after you, you guys ended. Florida Atlantic liking it right now. And let's not forget, this is an in-state rivalry. With these clubs, they know what it's like to play each other and bragging rights. Two two to Lauren Witt with two on. Right back up the middle base hit. They're gonna let the runner through this time and they have tied it up. Sending Olsen all the way. So what you would have liked to have seen whenever they had that other opportunity to score just this the last half inning. Just make Florida State attempt to for the center fielder to field the ball cleanly, for her to make a great throw, for the catcher to make a clean tag. There's so many mistakes that can happen on a play like this. Runner at second base, ball hit to the green. Sender, be aggressive. You might even get an obstruction call. Learn their mistake from the time before. This time they're sending her all the way to tie up this game. It pays off to be aggressive on the base pass. And not a good throw at all for Morgan. Barely got that back into the infield. They'll lay down the bunt to advance the runners. First out of the inning. It's a good job by Lauren Witt, too. She didn't put down a bunt on the first couple of pitches when she had the opportunity to lay down a bunt. So you better come through. When you miss those bunts, the first two pitches, you better either find a way to move the runners or find a way to get them in. And she did. FAU had six hits in the first four games of this tournament. They have five hits in the last two innings off of Florida State. There is no activity in their bullpen right now. So Lonnie Alameda is gonna go ahead and let Sandra Cock try and work through this. And remember this inning started with those two base hits right back up the middle. Olsen and Duffner hit him right back to Sandra Cock and she couldn't glove him. They're really used in the middle of the field. Yeah. Whenever they've gotten hits, they seem to be right back up the middle. Well, I'm surprised that Sandra Cock isn't using her off speed a little bit more, isn't ch changing eye planes a little bit more. 
Faith Davis and a chance to give the Owls the lead. Sander Cock knocks it down again, and they've got two runners in the same place. And the tag applied by Callie Herod on Lauren Witt. And a base running miscue there. You have to make a decision once that ball gets down on the ground. It's a line drive right back up the middle. And Sander Cock goes off of her glove. Herod, a good job to go get it. But look at the base running mistake right there. Witt needs to be watching the runner in front of her. Duffner is staying at third, so Witt, you cannot go. Even if it's an opportunity where Duffner should have taken off, if she doesn't, you've got to stay home. Herod at short, side retired. But FAU gets a run in, and we are even through four. Explosion for Florida State has quieted greatly here this afternoon. Their first four games, nine runs a game and 10 hits, just the one run, no home runs. And they find themselves tied with Florida Atlantic. The Owls winless here in their first four games. But they have brought all the energy. Florida State has not matched it. And Elizabeth Mason is retired. Four, five, and six here for the Seminoles. Florida State has been very clutch in key situations. They've hit the ball hard, they've hit the ball long, and in this game they haven't. Six hits in the game already, but they've only played it the one run. They've left the bases loaded a couple times. Two and one. That one behind her. Oops. Three one to Shellnut. Good ball, good ball, good ball, Burke. And that did hit her. Next batter for the Knolls, number one, Danny Morgan. Now it's Danny Morgan. Shellnut will be lifted for a pinch runner here. That's the go ahead for Florida State at first. Deja Bush. Shellnut can re enter. Nine's running for 13. Nine's running for 13. Nine's running for 13. Hey, Coach, you come out. Nine's running for 13. Nine and 13 out. Here we go. Go, go, go. Well, no. The best thing about Caitlin Berg throwing out Callie Herod in the first inning is that it makes Florida State be a little bit more cautious in a tight game. The runner at first base, do we want to steal? Do we not want to steal? And even she has such a live arm back there, you think as a runner you can't get as big of a lead, you can't get as big of a jump. To me, she's proven herself back there. Thrown off of her knees to second, thrown off of her knees to third. You can't go to sleep as a base runner, and that makes a really big difference in a tight game like this when your team's not scoring a lot of runs. Can't be as aggressive on the steal call. The Florida State team that stole a ton of bases last year. 
To second for one, over to first. Morgan will be safe at the bag, two down. It's a luxury of the having. Force. It's the luxury of having a great catcher like that. Zoe Casas, so walk in a single today. She's a good leader for them. I like her back behind the plate. She's really impressed me, mm -hmm. taking the time to go on and talk to me. I'll listen to a little encouragement, reminding the, run, uh, the infield runners here. Two outs, taking charge behind the plate. Eighty pitches now for Olson here in the fifth. Casas lifts that out of play. State's bats just seem a little bit more hesitant today. Yeah. Now, yesterday they would have been swinging at that pitch, a lot more aggressive. Casas drives one deep and out. The 12th home run of this tournament, the first today, and a 3-1 Florida State lead. Same spot, this one she attacks, she goes and gets it, gets around it, and that extension just allows that ball to jump off the bat. Second home run of the tournament, second of the season for Casas. That gives State a little breathing room. And to your point too about not being as aggressive, they've had some mistakes within this game that they could have taken advantage of that Nia Olsen threw them. And that's what they've done great for the first four games is that they, they were hunting mistakes. They were hitting mistakes. And that was a mistake by Mia Olsen on a one and two count. Another mistake there, a pitch that's up in the zone, too much played on it. You can see what they're capable of whenever they really attack a pitcher's mistakes. And, it's recognizing it's that mental fatigue. You don't see it as quick or you're a little bit lazy to pull the trigger. That pitch is up in the zone. Not a lot of movement. She stays on it, front shoulder on it, take it the other way. When you can tell Olsen's getting tired because this inning, every one of her pitches has been elevated. And now it's Leslie Ferris. Came on mid-game at second base to replace Noah. The 0 one pitch. And you, you know that Florida State's a good hitting team and that you might give up a home run or two in a game, but what really hurt that home run, too, was the hit by pitch to Anna Shellnut. Missed the opportunity to see if maybe she could have gotten her out on that pitch instead of free pass to first base and then a two run home run. Good coverage at short again by Legier, side retired, but Casas with the home run ball to put FSU on top. Number two, FSU with the lead as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Mason is our defensive MVP, brought to you by Wilson with this whip gem. Mason, Mason going into the gap, laying out. Love the fact that she goes and gets that ball. Fabulous first step. A lot of time we're talking about Lizzie Mason and her ability to hit home runs. This time it's the web gem yep. getting it done in the outfield. A little more comfortable for the Seminoles after the Casas home run and a 3-1 lead. As they try and stay undefeated heading into their top 10 showdown with Tennessee coming up next on ESPN2.
And here in the bottom of the fifth, the top of the order for the Owls. Threatened in the third and then finally broke through in the fourth. Defensive changes here, and after Lizzie Mason was just our defensive MVP, and right now she's catching. Look at that versatility. <laughs> That's right. Comes behind the plate, and Deja Bush, who had entered as the pinch runner, will stay out there and right. She's such a good athlete, Lizzie Mason. Yeah. Yeah. And she had such a strong bat. That's the reason she was put in the outfield. Whenever she would come to camps, I worked with her as a kid. She was always catching. She always had those tools of ignorance on and always wanted to be catching me or catching, catching, catching. And you, know, you go to a big D1 school and you have a good bat, you've got to figure out other places you can put yourself defensively. For whatever reason, it's, it seems like half of the batted balls have gone <laughs> right back to the yeah. circle <laughs> well, for Florida State. Well, two things that I like about this game so far that I think have been impressive. One is that Coach Joyce said, I'm going to move my kids up in the box. And she did that in they, they, those last two innings, five hits. So the adjustments by FAU have definitely worked. The second thing I really like is that the freshmen stayed in the circle and had to work out of the jam. Yep. It's so easy nowadays for these highly ranked teams to come to the rescue immediately for these young kids and not let them work out of situational uh, defensive plays or defensive situations where they need to learn to pitch and get out of bases loaded jams. They need to learn to get the hot shot. Cheryl, two down. Well, I think, too, it, it, you have to remember, too, it's February, so it's easier to leave her in there a little bit longer here than, you know, kind of mid-conference in April or postseason in May. Some injuries to Kara Bilodeau and Mackenzie Herzog, who's a freshman from Texas, rolled her ankle last week. They think she could be a big addition. So Catherine Sandercock has had a ton of work here in uh, Clearwater. And is right now looking at a 5-0 and start to the season, if she can wrap this up. And I think she was out of the, was she out of the batter's box when that hit her? Yep, she was for the third out. One, two, three inning for Sander Cock and the Seminoles. The players from these teams took time from softball to go visit the patients at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg. And a great opportunity to interact with some young fans, sign autograph, take some pictures, and spread a little joy at the Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in St. Pete. Yeah, it's awesome. Megan King helped spearhead all of that. She actually is a nursing major and hopes to one day work at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. And players from each team went down. I think and actually a couple of clubs wanted to go down as, as a club that couldn't make the, the visit. So it's great community involvement around this entire event. You know, a lot of times we talk about pre-conference tournaments, and there's a lot of them out there. But this truly has been a great event for the players and the community. Pitching change here for FAU is Kelsey Morrison. In her fourth appearance this season. Morrison throws the ball in the mid-60s and, and Jones, Coach Joan Joyce's fashion. She likes the up and the down. She likes to mix the rise and the drop. She has a very good horseshoe changeup. And when I asked <laughs> Coach, well, do any of your kids throw curveball <laughs> or screwball? And she looked at me and she goes, screwball, you know what's wrong with the screwball? Is the kids throw them on the inside corner belt high and they get out of the yard. <laughs> and so she's like, no screwballs. <laughs> <laughs> No screwballs. Nope. <laughs> and I'm not quite sure what the issue is right now. There. A little back and forth and all around. Joan Joyce is talking with the umpire. Well, if they're bringing another pitcher, I do wonder because they actually did put Morrison in to pinch run. And if they would have mistakenly removed her, she would be out of the game. Yeah. I, unless 
depending on how it was lined up, it was a DP. So she is out. So she is now out. The original lineup did show Morrison as the starting yep. pitcher. So Skylar Witte will be the pitcher here. Do you think a softball lineup is more difficult to understand or uh, calculus? <laughs> Which I don't. One? Well, I, I choose I, calculus. I don't try and no, explain lineup. either one, so <laughs> they might be equally. Because of the re-entry rules, of course, in softball, they're much more liberal than they are in baseball. As we welcome you uh, on camera here is what the term is that we use on in the television world. Beth Mullins, Amanda Scarborough, Michelle Smith. What are your thoughts about Florida State and Tennessee? We got coming up on ESPN2 tonight. Oh, I'm pumped. Epic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're excited. Uh, it, I think it's one of the biggest games of the tournament, and it's uh, the last game of the tournament, so there's just a lot of build up to it. Two big offenses, too. Tennessee's yeah. been swinging the bat well here, just like Florida State has. Interested. I can't wait to see who pitches for Tennessee. They have three arms now, yeah. which I know that Maddie Moss and Kaylin Arnold are excited about to have a third arm in their rotation. Are they going to throw the freshmen? Are they going to throw one of the seniors? Maddie yep. Moss has been coming to relief a lot. so mm -hmm. They've had the day to consider it. Feels like a day since the last pitch, but I think we're ready to go now. <laughs> this is Callie Herod, top of the order. A walk, a ground out, and a single for Callie. There's been a couple of illegal pitches here that's quietly gone unnoticed. Oh, yep. Yeah. Three and one. They just changed the count of that last one. She's pointing out her drag mark saying, my foot's not leaving the ground. That's exactly what Skylar Woody was yeah. just doing, and that's what Joan Joyce is talking about, too, as you can see how the toe of your foot, the right foot for a pitcher, drags on the ground. It leaves a mark. and. Whenever a pitcher is crow hopping or in the air, that drag obviously stops. Digging up a little bit of the clay. To... It's the last pitch to, that was called the illegal pitch. She's coming up. Yeah. yeah. Because she's rotating and hopping up instead of driving out. toward home plate. Come on right here. Yeah, so she's putting up a fight, but we got you on replay, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and a base hit for Herod. And she actually drug correctly, it looked like, yeah. to the naked eye on this last pitch. So one before that we showed you her, her drag foot lifts up, it's in the air, and then it replants and finishes the drag. But on that last one, to me, it looked like her toe stayed down and she left a nice trail. Yeah, she still threw the, goal, the ball with good velocity at 66 miles an hour. Carson Gordon, base hit and a walk. This is the, the pitch that was the legal pitch where her foot yeah. Yeah. stays toe down nicely. Clear difference from the one that was called an illegal pitch. So in any adjustment for the freshman, that's not easy to do. She's six foot four. I mean, she's got great levers to be able to use. And if she can keep that foot down and, and use 
those arms and those legs and get everything coming toward home instead of going up in the air. She should be able to throw in the high 60s. The lovely Holly Rowe is now in the house. Holly will be joining us uh, for that Tennessee Florida State game coming up over on ESPN2. Your turn now, your turn. Two one to Gordon. That's you, coach. That's you. Gotta be you next time, coach. It gotta be you. <laughs> Lana's like, I'm getting out of the way. <laughs> the fans down the first base side and right field line are just getting a tan right now. Oh, I think they from are that bacon sun. too. <laughs> they are in it. Third base is nice and shaded. Probably feels great over there. We gotta get here early. Get here day one so you get the scouting report. Yeah, you know, see where the sun's <laughs> setting. That's right. So different from nice shaded side uh, of the field to then hope you brought your sunscreen. Yes, exactly. Seen a lot of um, burnt arms mm -hmm. and backs here. A couple of base runners now in the top of the sixth for Florida State at the top of their order. So here come the big boppers. Of course, I say that everybody's been bopping in this lineup all weekend. They're the bebops. Eight of the nine in the lineup have reached base. Tonight for Florida State. A run in the third, and then the Zoe Casas two run home run in the fifth. This is Rock Benavides on the run for Herod at second. Callie can re enter. And Sydney Sherrill at the plate. Drove in there first run with a double in the third. Two and oh. Burke going again out to talk to her pitchers. Doing a good job of controlling the game, being the captain of that infield. Especially as a junior catcher leading the way with the freshman in the circle. First time opportunity, especially against one of the top ranked teams and defending national champions. There's probably some nerves out there. in for a strike, two and one. Three and one to Sydney Sherrill, two on and nobody out. Bases loaded. For number four hitter, Elizabeth Mason. Single already today. Yeah, Bob. Your turn, Bob. Oh, one. And that'll drop into shallow center. A run is in. Benavides scores. Here comes Gordon to the plate. Beats the throw. And the two run single for Mason. And Dad Carl's loving it. Carson Gordon had a read just like this. She was at second base against LSU and almost an identical hit. It was a flare right behind second base. 
and she had such a good read. She opened up her shoulders. She knew exactly where the yeah, center nine. fielder was playing, yeah, and she nine. knew right away that it was going to drop and that she could score from second base. Did they just call another yes. illegal pitch? Yes, they did. And so a pitching change is coming here for the Owls. Um, let's see, they're going to go to uh, Kara Lekinski. And we'll take the time out and be right back. Five to one, Florida State leading FAU. A couple runs in already in the inning and a pitching change for the Owls. And the Seminoles still with nobody out have two on base. For Deja Bush. She's hitting in the five spot where Anna Shellnut was. So you go from a home run hitter to a slapper and the catch, double play. Duffner to win. Oh, Lokinski immediately in the game induces a pop-up. Love the way that Duffner is going to come up, grab it, and fire across the infield. And Lizzie Mason is caught off the bag. Lokinski, she's loving it. Loving what her defense just gave her. Now it's Danny Morgan with another, ooh, and Danny gets hit. I was about to say another runner in scoring position still, and now two on board with two out. You know, Michelle, I think from the angle that Lizzie Mason had at first base to see that ball through that, I think she thought there's no way that she was gonna be able to go up and grab it. She had a great read of it, be able to see it right in front of her. I think off the bat, she's probably like, no way she's able to go up and get that. It's gonna land behind her. I need to scoot to second base. It's a great play by Duffner. Yep. They've had their hands full with Zoe Casas, so walk a single and a two-run home run in the fifth inning. Let's take a look. This is earlier in the game. Had the count, one and two, goes off speed. It's about belt high, and Casas is ready to hit that mistake. That was a really big swing in this game because it was tied up, and that put Florida State on top, 3-1. Their 12th home run in their five games here. And the umpire immediately was calling a legal pitch. So this is the second pitcher that has been called for an illegal pitch. Hers was, I believe, a timing violation. Our hands together, pause. Base hit for Zoe out to right. The throw will come into third, so a run will score as Cheryl comes home. Casas is having herself a game. Pitch on the outside corner, she just tomahawks it. She gets around it. Just drives it through that three four hole picks up another ribby for her teammates 
Yeah, 70, your turn. 70, your turn. Cassidy Davis in the eighth spot in the order. She's got a single tonight. Three runs across in the inning for Florida State. And after uh, sort of quietly meandering through the first four innings, now they've come alive here in the fifth and the sixth. Challenge early in the season. You're playing six games on the weekend. It's late on a Sunday night. How deep can you dig to find that uh, last burst of energy to carry you through to Monday? Come on, 70, your turn now. Come on. Especially knowing that you've got a top 10 opponent still to come next in Tennessee. And you know their fans, the Lady Vol Locos, will elevate the noise in this place. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will. As well as the color scheme, that orange <laughs> hair that they wear. If they can find a seat. That's yeah. going to be tough. I have a feeling they'll figure it out. Look at that, standing room only. Crowds have been fabulous this weekend. Great event. Davis waited on it. Uh, is it enough? Nope. Going to stay in fair territory. And the catch is made by Jennings. Side retired. Six to one. Seminoles add to the lead. Beautiful night here in Clearwater at the St. Pete Clearwater Lead Invitational presented by Wilson. Six to one, Florida State leading FAU as we move to the bottom of the sixth. Two run home run and an RBI single for Zoe Casas. And Catherine Sandercock trying to go the distance in the circle for her fifth win of her freshman year through the first couple of weekends. Grounded to short. And uh, that's Sydney Sherrill moving over to short. That's how it always works out, right? Mm. You move a position, you get tested right away. So I guess she can do it all. Played second last year, moved over to third. Now we see her at shortstop. All right. Our internet fans are uh, learning this as we are. Who's at a third base, guys? Got eyes on a number? Uh, I believe it is, yeah, number 11. Oh, it's Rock. It's Rock it's Benavides. Rock Benavides. She's a rock over at third. I'm going to pretend we didn't hear that. <laughs> All right, so our base runner here after the E6. And then a base hit. And that's going to be extras. Mia Olson rumbling around to third, waving her in. Sliding in safely is Duffner with a triple. And it's 6-2. So Ferris, the second baseman, is up the middle. Look at this ball. This is traditionally hit it where the second baseman would be, and it is scorched. And because the second baseman is not there in that traditional position, it's easily going to get to the fence. So positioning is such a big part of this game. You have to know where pitches are being located, where they're being thrown. Follow the glove. We've seen Florida State play a lot in their middles, a lot up the infield, especially that second base position. So as a hitter, I know as a, as a lefty, if, anything, if I get anything, I'm looking at pulling it mm -hmm. and roping it through that, that huge gap. I think this game has been so important for FAU's morale. Just mm -hmm. being able to score two runs in this game and be able to put together some hits, have some quality at bats. They're going to be able to use this game and propel them for the rest of the season, for the rest of this month. They've had it so hard with the schedule that they've played early on, but did a nice job offensively against Florida State to start some rallies, put some people on base. Oh, 
Just six hits through their first four games, but seven of them today against the number two team in the country. And they've matched their run total. Well, and they did some extra work in the cage. And that's one of the things that Coach Joyce was excited about. Shan Walker as well, the assistant coach, said that the team was just in the cage while they were waiting for their game time. All of them taking extra hits. They were relaxed. They were enjoying it. And you, know, you can see they, they've got some confidence. Even though they've dropped some games, they've not been run ruled. They played uh, Texas very close. They played a lot of their big yep. competition very close. They can start putting some runs up on the board. They've got a decent staff, pitching staff. Lauren Witt hit by a pitch. Runners on the corners. You know, and on the flip side, too, this has been a really good game for Florida State as well. Sander Cock has had to work out of some situations. And you know what? This team needs adversity. You're not yeah. going to go through and run roll every club on your way back to Oklahoma City. So the fact that they're being challenged and they've got they're being challenged in their positioning, Everybody's playing multiple positions. It's important. This is the stuff you need. This is where you grow. You've still got games coming up uh, with Arizona and Notre Dame. Two games with Florida. I mean, the weekend that Florida Atlantic has next weekend is going to seem way different than this weekend. <laughs> Stetson doubleheader, Florida Gulf Coast, and then UConn twice. And nothing yeah. against those teams because they're going to compete. But they've played ev five ranked opponents here every single game. And like, as Michelle mentioned, playing Georgia before they got here. Yeah, and three of those four games are at home. They're yes. going to be like, oh. Yes, thank home goodness. Sweet homes. Yes. Florida, by the way, uh, shut out Central Michigan today. Kelly Barnhill is now 6-0 and on the season. That's what's coming up for the Owls. Alabama and South Carolina winners today. Texas A&M lost to McNeese State. Yeah, they lost to Liberty this weekend, oh, too. Mm -hmm. Dot Richardson's uh, Liberty. Yeah. Yep. Let's go, Dot. <laughs> Couldn't hold up on the swing, and a strikeout one down for Katherine Sandercock. Third of the day. got her in between that drop ball not only well, had over the top spin but it just kind of tailed into like a screwball it's tricky as a hitter yeah I'm not looking for that you know you got to get your barrel on <laughs> out in front of that if it lags forget it That's not a 1985 hairband, folks. That <laughs> is the Lady Vol Locos. Look at the jackets they've got custom made. I, I think that's an upgrade from last year when they were at this <laughs> uh, at this tournament. That's a look. You can tell they're a little scared on their faces too about where they're going to sit. I yeah. think they're scouting it out right now. They look a little concerned. Well, because they like to sit as a pack. Yes, got to be a group to get the full loco-ness. That's right. They might have some negotiating to do here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Tennessee coming up next against Florida State on ESPN 2, 7 Eastern. Faith Davis. Another strikeout for Sandercock. That's two in a row in her fourth of the game. He's in the outside part of the plate. Looks like a fastball in the outside corner with a little bit of tail. She hits Rosa, so the bases are loaded. 
and the tying run comes to the plate for FAU. Well, and this is, again, one of those freshman mistakes that we've seen Sander Koch make throughout this tournament. Number nine hitter, already have people on base. You've got the lead. You want to go right out that number nine, and, and she plunks her. And those are the things that you learn. With the experience, you're like, all right, this is this is a big mistake. This is where I need to recognize. This is a number nine hitter. I need to go right at her and be precise. Well, and you think she's only thrown 74 pitches. And for the amount of action that had been on the base pass, I feel like that's a pretty low pitch count considering we're almost at the seventh inning. And this is about the, the time, though, last night where she got tired, right in that range of 70 yeah. to 80 pitches. So I think some of it's conditioning, getting game conditioned. Top of the order and Maddie Palmer. Even for a strike. Two of the locos <laughs> got together. The folks behind him might not be able to see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you have some hairspray? <laughs> like sitting behind me. <laughs> I don't know how they negotiated that space. That's such a good phrase for it because <laughs> there was little room to be had and somehow two of them fit. Oh, yeah. They brought their own seat cushions and everything. They're ready. They are ready. See, the folks behind him also have Tennessee have yeah, big T on, so they're, they're okay looking through the orange hair <laughs> watching the game. Here's the 0-2 from Katherine Sandercock. Yeah! Slapped, and that will drop for a base hit. And two runs will score. And it is to 6-4 with the go-ahead run now coming to the plate. Parker and Jennings... And the two top spots for FAU are both slappers. And typically, bases loaded situation. It's a tough go for him, but not here. Parker's just going to pop this. Excuse me, Palmer's just going to pop this onto the outfield. But I'd like to see Danny Morgan go get this. She needs to read that a little bit better and make that catch. FAU in business. An inning that started with the error on the shortstop, Sydney Sherrill, after they had moved her from third base to shortstop due to a substitution. And the Knowles are in trouble here. It seemed like Danny Morgan was unsure of whether she wanted to go feet first or head first mm -hmm. for that ball, and it kind of went in between. That's why that ball fell. If she would have gone head first for that, she would have been able to, and gotten a better read, she would have been able to catch that. You know, everybody talks about the graduation of Jesse Warren, but they also lost Morgan Claveman, yes, perhaps yes. their best outfielder, out, out in center. So they've had to move some people around. And, and Cleveland, Cleveland's covered a ton yep. of ground. Yep. Slapped out to center, and that's going to fall in for a base hit. And now they're loaded with owls. And an offense that was quiet for four games here has come alive. And they may be changing here to Cassidy Davis in the circle. And that uh, will be all for Katherine Sandercock. Cassidy Davis on in relief to try and shut this down. Back in a moment.
Well, Florida Atlantic has found its offense, and they've been good from top to bottom. Three runs scored here in the bottom of the sixth. And they have an opportunity to go for the upset of the second-ranked team in the country. They've got the bases loaded here with two outs and their number three hitter, Sammy Legier, to face the new pitcher for the Seminoles, Cassidy Davis. Three hits in the inning, a couple of hit batters, and an error helping the Owls. Gets away from Mason. Oh, the runners were in a little indecisive. Back to the bag at third. There's been a really hard bounce back, too, yep. for this entire weekend from that screen. So the runners at third base, when they see a pass ball, are going to be a bit hesitant. But that was a pretty nice bounce that you could have scored on but you just can't know that that no. ball is going to go towards the first baseline and that runner at second base had to get all the way back well, you want to give your hitter a chance here slow roller to third Benavides over to first got her second time tonight FAU leaves them loaded they threaten they get three in it's a two run game to the seventh Here's a look at Zoe Casas, our offensive MVP, brought to you by Wilson. Three for three today for Zoe, including a two-run home run and an RBI single with the long ball. Pitch on the upper part, and she bashes it right on out of that right field line. Lots of power in that seven spot for Zoe Casas. A couple of base knocks, three RBIs, not a bad day at all. Well, based on what Lonnie Alameda was telling us mid-game, sometimes you may not be at your best. Sometimes you may not have the the high energy. Sometimes fatigue will set in on a long weekend. And what do you have to fight through it? And can you still win when you're not at your best? And I think that's a little bit about what the Seminoles are facing today. And they have a team in Florida Atlantic that is coming after them tonight. And is not backing down. Kara Lekinski. Nice change of speed there. Did they call another? No, I think someone's getting glasses or taking off glasses. La did Lonnie Alameda just? I think she grabbed. She maybe took him. Did the they? Player. Did they leave, leave him? In? Oh yeah, I think she did. Take him from the first baseman, I guess. Yeah, helping her out. That's Lonnie. Lonnie will help you. Yeah, I'll carry him for this <laughs> inning. Yeah, sure. Lonnie has a stream of sunlight right at her spot. Shielding with the arm instead of going with the shades down. And now she's moved a little bit up the line. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Ferris. Base hit. Top of the order coming up. That's new for her to be at first base coaching, right? Gelly Cooper was there last year. Mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. She's not used to seeing her out there, I don't think. It doesn't seem like I have recently. She has been out there this whole tournament. Yep. Now Benavides will take over in the leadoff spot for Herod. You know, Bunning's not been at its top game in this tournament. No. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, yeah. but I've seen so many missed bunts this weekend. A little out of practice, yeah. I guess. They get better. Trying to manufacture something here. It's the heart of the order coming back up for FAU in the bottom half of the inning. Two chances for Rock, and she's 0 for 2. 
That's the one skill you have to have in this game. Because at some point you're you're gonna be called. To sacrifice your position and, and even if you don't get it down in this particular instance, you still have to know what your job is and that's to move your teammate up. Think like a coach. You know, it's one of those things too, if you're looking for a way to get in the game or get get on the field, be the best on the team at a particular skill. And anytime you need a sacrifice, you'll get the call to pinch hit. One, two from Lukinski. Fouls it off. All these coaches out here making lists that they're going to go and practice this week. Yeah. <laughs> Long list. <laughs> Got to work on this defensively. Got to work at this in the circle. Got to work at this offensively. Change up. Missed it. Two and two. Strike three, one down. Nice little bend on this pitch. You can see it kind of pops back into the zone. Got to swing at that. That is a nice pitch on the inside corner. So unable to move the runner over. Now it's Carson Gordon. You know, Rock Benavides missed those two bunts, fouled it off, and quickly Lukinski got to be up 0-2. I would have liked to have seen her go right at her the next pitch, not fall behind to a full count. Well, I think they're going to go back to the starter here, Olsen. Says she only needs a couple of warm ups. She's already thrown today, so she's good to go. with the single, out at first. Off the glove of Olsen, backhanded, the toss to second in time. Ball hit right, back up the middle and hard. Rosa pops out of her glove, gets it over to Legere. I thought it looked like she had it in time and she was out. Oof. It's it's a close play because that toss came up high. Two down. Sydney Sherrill.
Backhand into Troy Legier. Long way to go with it. And Cheryl was safe. Gordon racing around, coming for home. The throw to the plate. Safe. Outstanding base running for Carson Gordon. No hesitation at all. It's been all weekend like that. She wants to take not just one base, not two. She's looking for three if she's taken too easily. Well, the umpires are going to get together to play at first base. And the players bump into each other. And, ooh, Cheryl looked like she got hurt. Get the wind knocked out of her? What are they talking about here? Possibly obstruction? Or interference? Once the, once, once the ball goes past a fielder, you know, it's opening. I think that's incidental contact. who the closest fielder is. It's going to be the play at first base after the ricochet here. So when she turns in, she is live. Instead of peeling off, that's why you always want to teach your, your players to peel to the foul side. She peeled in and turned inside, so she is live. So the question then becomes, as she's heading back toward first, so see she, she peels in. I think she's getting clarification too. It, it, you just we're seeing a couple of plays you just don't see very often. I think it is going to be obstruction on the first baseman, which would give Cheryl. Well, uh, n because Cheryl was going back toward oh, first. Oh, she's going back to first. Yeah, if she was trying to advance to second, she would get second. But I think the question more is: Was Cheryl interfering with the defender right. in order to make a play to come home? So I'm assuming they're just going to call it incidental contact. score that as a single and an error on the shortstop. Which I would think it would. Hmm. I don't know, it went right to the shortstop. I don't understand the single part. Yeah. I think I would just call it an error. I think Sydney Sherrill would have beat it. They're saying that she would have beat out that. Oh, okay. That yeah. hit would have been an infield single, but because she threw it in the dirt, the ball got away, and then that's the error yep. where the runner advanced home. Yep. yep. 2-2 two, two here to Mason. on now for Deja Bush. Get into a double play in the sixth. Two 
Moore. Mason and Cheryl on the bases. One run in here in the top of the seventh. Two and two. Runners will move up 60 feet. is loaded. Danny Morgan for the Seminoles. directions and you see this ball just gonna eat her up a little bit I'm gonna call that a base hit it's also though a ball it's not struck that hard you have to go get it play it don't let it play you Casas can she continue her big day has driven in three and has reached base four times. Off the glove of Legere. She took her eyes off it. Two runs are in. Some uncharacteristic mistakes in this. And ain't a couple of errors, two errors now actually for Legere in this inning that absolutely 100% has to be caught. Doesn't matter if it's February or if it's May. You're right, she just took her eye off of it. It's tailing a little bit away from her. Stop moving her feet. Cassidy Davis is the ninth to the plate for the Seminoles here in the seventh. A couple of walks, a couple of errors in the inning. Four runs in and the potential for more. important when things start to spin out of control you figure out a way to right the ship get that elusive last out of the inning three and one 
Davis, a slow roller to Duffner, going to the bag at third and just did get her side retired, but a four run seventh final chance coming up for FAU. Ten to four, Florida State with the lead over Florida Atlantic. So the last chance here for the Owls. They will have four, five, and six coming up. She was safe at third by a mile. She was the end of the replay. By mile, mile. <laughs> Cassidy Davis going through her warmups. Olson, Duffner, and Witt are the hitters duo. Sander Cox still stands to pick up the win here with Davis on in relief. Got to believe then it would be Megan King against Tennessee coming up next. Quick turnaround for Florida State, too. Just about 30 minutes. Get prepared for the biggest games of their weekend. I, I like that. I like once you get on a roll, let's just keep playing. Sometimes you have too much time in between games. It uh, can lose some focus. And do a little little food in between, a little more warm-up, a little throwing. <laughs> that's a deep fly ball, and that's gone. A home run for Mia Olsen. Solo shot here in the seventh. I feel good for me all of a sudden to give up all those runs and have a chance to hit for herself up the plate. It's a pitch that, quite frankly, is too much on the plate for being ahead in the count. Cassie Davis relying too much on her speed. Mia David, or excuse me, Mia Olsen hitting it where it's pitched. Over that right center field wall, getting one of the runs that she gave up back. Pretty swing by her, but one of the better hitters for Florida Atlantic this weekend. Yeah, one-two count. You don't want to be giving up a dinger on that, on that count. And, you know, you go back and you think, okay, if they would have had a 1-2-3 inning, that would have made that yeah. a 5-6 five to, five to six game. Yeah. It's so important late in the game to continue to shut down your opponents. Well, the Knowles do realize that behind Megan King, there is still some work to do to shore up a pitching staff. Yeah. And Davis and Sander Cock will have to continue to work hard, keep improving throughout the season. Opposite field, Casas, one down. Oh, 
couple more locos have seats over there. So now they've doubled in size. Don't know what's happening, but <laughs> don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> Only they would figure out in this packed yes. crowd how to be able to still <laughs> sit right next to each other. Yes. Yeah, the volunteers uh, are here. Their fans are rolling in. Going to be a good one coming up on the douche. Base hit. You think they paid some people off? Or? Owls will not go quietly into this night, folks. Well, they won't. They're ending on a high note. That's what you want to do in a tournament, too. You don't want to finish up with a loss, feeling bad about yourself, or you have to get back on a bus and travel back home. Just knowing that you lost or didn't play your best. They're going to end on more of a high note, offensively at least, for how they play the rest of this weekend. Scoring five runs in this game. Yeah, they've been feisty. So 55, Sammy Williams over there to run. And at first, here's Caitlin Burke. She's ready to go. Doesn't know the umpire is not back there yet. <laughs> She's, give me, give me, give me. Throw me the ball. Lady Ball Nation walking in. Aubrey Leach, Chelsea Seger, and Amanda Ayala off to a hot start. The sophomore from New Jersey. New Jersey. Molly Shipman, a strong freshman class. Madison Passini. One thing I did notice this weekend, there's some good Amanda hitters. Yeah, you could have the an all-Amanda team, I think. Good. Amanda Lorenz, Amanda mm -hmm. Doyle, Amanda Sanchez, Amanda Ayala. That's four. Yeah, we need to find five more Amandas. <laughs> I will tweet us with your thoughts. <laughs> At Amanda, looking for that all-Amanda team. <laughs> Hashtag all-Amanda. Yeah. All Amandakin. All Amandakin. Look at you, Smitty. So proud. <laughs> so good. So proud. I do, I do not have my doctorate of All letters. All Amandakin. I'm going to have it ready for seven innings podcast I this think week. so. I think so. They're out there. We just got to find them. <laughs> <laughs> One, two pitch. Popped her up. Rock Benavides. Two down. Taking applications for my starting pitcher. There's one out there for an Amanda. Need one. We'll see. Why does, does anybody pop to mind just yet? Not that ready. We'll, we'll find her. We'll find her. <laughs> <laughs> or she'll find you. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Faith Davis down to their final out. Final strike. <laughs> Struck her out. And Florida State stays undefeated. And they beat FAU 10 to 5. Join us at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. It's Florida State and Tennessee Top 10 Showdown.